Hi, my name's Sh Sharice, and I am going to do a tutorial on a super simple reversible bag. What we need for our bag is a piece of 8.5 by 11 paper, a pin. This is a children's belt that I'm going to be using for a strap, but if you don't have a children's belt that you is just throw that you're just not using, you can also get corda uh, you can get belting or you can just make a strap out of your fabric. I need a ruler of some variety and two half yards half yard pieces of fabric, one for the lining and one for the outside of the bag. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to make our pattern. Since I don't have a PDF for you, I, we are go I'm going to show you how to make the pattern. The first thing we do is we are going to fold our paper into quarters, very simply. Then we are going to use a something round from your kitchen. I'm going to use my smallest bowl, but you could use a a cup or you could use masking tape or anything that has a round edge. And I'm going to draw just around it just like that. Now I have that I'm going to draw a line straight up and a line straight across. I'm going to open it up. And if you see I have a, uh, a, rounded, a rounded corner and two straight lines. From that, I'm going to add an inch and a half straight down. From, from this line, I'm going to go out an inch and a half, about there. And make a straight line straight down. And that is, this, this is going to be my handle. Then I'm going to cut it out and through through movie magic I've got my piece cut out here this is my handle and I don't need a pattern for any other part of this project we are going to make uh, the bag we are going to make is going to be 12 12 12 inches wide by 11 inches tall and it's going to have a two inch fake bottom so I then I'm going to take my fabric and this is this is striped fabric. I wanted the stripe to go up and down on my bag, but if you want if you wanted the stripe to go around, you just fold it the other direction. I'm going to fold it so it's right sides together with with my fold down here in the corner. Then I'm going to take my uh, my lining fabric and I'm going to fold it just the same way and stack it very carefully on top just like that. So now both of my fabrics are folded so I have a corner that has a double fold. Then I'm going to put my handle on and this is important the handle needs to go so that it is not on the fold. If you can see my handle is not on the fold it is where the fold where it will have four open parts. That's important because this handle needs to be on the edge of the bag. If you put it on the fold like this, the handle would be in the center of your bag and we are not making a bag with the handle in the center for this tutorial. Then, since I know my bag is going to be 11 inches tall, I'm going to make measure 11 inches. Then I'm going to add two, uh, then I'm going to add one more inch to the bottom and another half an inch for my seam allowance. And that is where I'm going to place my pattern piece. Because my bottom is going to be two inches. If I wanted my bottom to be wider, I would add a little bit more than that, but my bottom is going to be two inches. Then I take my shears. And cut. through all eight layers of fabric. If you do not have a crazy heavy duty pair of shears, you might want to do your back and your front separately. But my shears are quite good. 
I'm just going to finish drawing this. I'm just going to draw this on here so I can so I can take it off. And I'm going to go across right here where my my top ended. Oh, I need to go. Oh, I need my fat, my shears to cut all the way up. I'm going to cut across that top. And then if you don't have a cutting mat, you can do this with your scissors, but I'm going to use my I'm going to use my rotary cutter to do this particular step. So if you don't have a rotary cutter, you can just you can just um, cut this straight down with your shears. But since I do have a rotary cutter, I'm just going to cut myself a straight line right here. And there we have a bag that's totally cut out. This will be the handle right here. So I'm going to cut off the belt clasp. I'm going to come over to the other side and cut off the the end where it's double folded and these are just going to go into my sewing stuff to use for a different project. Our next item we are going to do, I'm going to show this to you um, I'm going to show this to you before I go sew it then I will go sew it. I am going to sew straight up this line and straight up this line on both the, li the liner and the outside of the bag. So we're, we'll get to that step and then I will come back. Now that I've finished doing the, up the hem with a one, one half inch seam allowance, I have a little handle that looks like this and the bag looks like this. But see, I want this bag to have a full bottom. So what I'm going to do is open up the bag, put my hand in here, and and make a nice little 45 degree angle right here. See, you can see that right there. It's a 45 degree angle. Now, because I want this to be a little two inch bottom, I have to measure with my ruler just two inches, just like that. Then I am going to draw a line with my pin, and that is going to be my sewing line. I'm going to add one pin here so I don't lose that nice fold that I just made. Then I'm going to do that again on the other side, just exactly the same way I did on that side. Open it up line up my crease with my my fold with my seam you can feel it lined up you can't see it lined up but you can feel it if you feel it you can feel that it's lined up then put my put my ruler on there nice and st along nice and straight along that line and make a line at the 2 inch mark and then put a pin in there now I'm going to sew these two shut. I'm going to do the same thing to my front. I'm going to sew these two shut and I will be back. Now as you see I've sewn my corners shut just like that. You can see I did it on all four corners. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just take that extra fabric off on all four corners just like this. Now comes the making it into a faux bottom. I didn't actually sew a bottom on here, but I want it to look like I did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully fold this over so this point and this point make a straight line between them, if you see that. that the point of my, my cutoff and the point of my cutoff make a straight line. That I'm going to pin this 
that I'm going to sew it right on the edge like I am top stitching. Basically this is just a top stitch. I'm going to sew it all the way down here and I'm going to do that on both sides for my lining and my outside fabric. As you can see there is a seam here. Well it's hard to see but there's a seam here and there's a seam here. You might be able to see it easier on this fabric. There's a seam here and a seam here. As you can see if I pull it open I just made a seam. When I turn this right side out it looks like I sewed a bottom onto this and matched it up very carefully. People would be so impressed that you could match that up so carefully because look it looks like there's a bottom sewn onto this. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to iron my side handle and my my bottom on both sides then I will show you how to put this the rest of the way together. So here as you can see you can now see that bottom that I sewed onto there and you know but nobody else knows that that bottom isn't actually a separate piece it's just the same piece sewn, sewn with a line the next thing we are going to do is we are going to turn I'm just going to choose the lining I'm going to turn the lining wrong side out and I'm going to slip it over the bag so that makes right sides together and I'm going to carefully oh I'm going to carefully clip my threads Then I'm going to carefully line these up, pushing this all the way in there. I'm going to carefully line these two up and do a quick pin up of those. But before I pin those, I am going to put one end of my strap into my bag. There it goes. Goodbye strap going to pin it between these two but I'm going to pin it out far enough so I can actually see it just like that do you see that? Mm -hmm. going to pin that you notice I'm not doing that to the other side of my bag because it turns in right, right side out funny if I do that then I'm going to pin along here Now the other thing I need is I need a hole to turn this right side out through. And what I do when I need to start and stop stitching is I do a double pin that just is my my cue that says I'm supposed to stop and do something because I have a tendency to sew fast and mindlessly. Um, there's my double pin. That's going to be my opening to turn the whole bag in right side out. That shouldn't be a problem because my bag is not, it's not super, the fabric isn't super thick. You don't need a very big hole. Going to pin it all the way around. This other side I am not even going to leave an opening. Just the one side will, needs an opening. This side I'm just going to sew all the way. And to be perfectly honest with you, when I sew, if I'm in a fast mood, I wouldn't pin this whole thing except for the handles. Um, some days, if I'm in a more careful mood, I do pin. But most often, I do not. When I am sewing my, when I'm sewing my bag right sides together, I sew along here all the way down to the other side. Then I sew across my handle twice and then I sew back but on the side that doesn't have a handle you need to leave it open because we will be inserting our handle after we turn it right side out. Okay now I'm going to stitch that up and I'll be back. We have officially sewn all the way around. I double went back and forth twice on this because I want my handle to be nice and stable. As you can see, I have my start and stop place where I don't have any stitches. 
Those are coming out because I don't like poking myself. Now we are going to clip the curves very rapidly. I don't need a lot of clips, but I do need a few. Otherwise this won't lay right. And we like everything to lay perfectly. It's kind of the goal when you're sewing is to make things look like you bought them. And you see this isn't a very wide seam. It's not as wide as my other ones. It could be a little bit wider, but it doesn't have to be because I'm going to top stitch this entire part. And so it's already going to be double stitched. So we don't really have to worry too much. It's better not to clip the seam that when I'm when I'm clipping corn edges. Let's see if I make sure I got all those. Okay. Now I need to find the place that I left open. There it is. We're turning this bag right side out. And see, I didn't really need a very big area to go through because really that bag will fit through a little two inch area. That's not a, that's not an issue. Sometimes I found that patterns will tell me to use a much larger um, opening, but if you're, if you're kind of careful, this fits all the way through there. Hopefully my handle will start coming out pretty soon. And here's this bag all coming out, coming out, coming out. We are just super close to being done with this bag. Oh, here's my handle right here. We'll get that all the way out. And see we are a little over halfway with a little over halfway turned out already that was super fast this bag if you are an experienced seamstress this bag will probably take you from start to finish about half an hour if you are a less experienced seamstress I would give yourself a, a margin of maybe an hour just so you don't have to hurry and here we have this bag Now we're going to deal with the other handle. See, here's my handle on this side. And this handle needs to come in through here. I need my handle here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull. This is, this is a little complicated, so pay close attention. I have my finger through there. I'm going to make sure my strap is not twisted. That I'm going to put it into this hole that I have my finger through. Okay, do you see that? Putting it into this hole. Then I'm going to take this whole part, pull it out through my little opening. Let's see if I can find my handle in there. It should be there because I can feel it. Oh, let's see if we can find it. Oh, there it is. The longest part of this bag is going to be threading my handle. Ah, uh, there we have it. See? Right there. Now I'm going to take this and go back and forth three times like I did on this side. Then I will be back. Now I'm going to clip this just to take a little bit of the bulk out of my handle. And then that will go in to my bag and come out just looking like that. And here's my other side, both clipped, nice and... And then I'm going to tuck my lining into my bag. And we are almost there. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to... I'm going to iron the top before I, I'm going to iron this top before I top stitch. As you can see, I have my cute handles and my lining is right side out. The nice thing about this bag is as soon as we have sewn up this, sewn up our little, our little hole right here that we turned it right side out from, 
this bag will be reversible. Now our bag is ready to top stitch. The only thing we really have to be careful of right here is I have a little open spot. So I'm going to pin the open spot to make sure I'm going to make sure that I get it top stitched nicely. And if you know how to top stitch, you're just going to top stitch all the way around, including the bottom of the handles. We're just going to top stitch the entire thing. At this point, if you want to add a decorative top stitch, you can do a decorative stitch. I'm not going to. I'm just going to straight stitch. But m many of your machines have cute patterns that you could do all the way around. And here is our bag, all top stitched. I have a few little threads to, I have a th few little threads to snip on this side. And the nice thing about this bag is it's 100% reversible. So if I get tired of that bag, if I get tired of that bag, I can have this cute little animal bag. And there we have it.